and Mrs. North, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. squares. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I'll bet. Look, mister, I spotted you all the way back in Dutch's place. You saw me before? Sure, in the bar, in Dutch's bar. I had a hunch where you were heading when you walked out of the joint. It was extremely intuitive of you. Now, will you please go? What is it? Bad health? Money? I'd lay odds on that. A very shrewd deduction. Who is it, your wife? Now, just a minute. Yeah, it's your wife and another guy. And they fish you out of the drink. Your wife and this heel, they'll be sorry, all right. Only they'll get over it. Trouble is, you'll never get over being dead. What's your name, Florence Nightingale? You're not even close. My friends call me Lucille. My friends call me Charles, and I'd like to know if I might buy you a drink. Of anything but water, honey. Bad stuff. People sometimes get drowned in it. Well, ready to go, darling? In a moment. You know, Jerry, I finally figured out why I like to come here every so often. Mm -hmm. It's all right, only you should really print everything in Braille. But, darling, that's part of it. There's something about the soft lights and the general atmosphere that makes me feel as though we're having a rendezvous. <laughs> kind of dull, isn't it, having a rendezvous with your own husband? Darling, there's no one I'd rather rendezvous with. Oh, wonderful. You conceal yourself in your outer cave while my slouch hat down over my eyes. We'll slip out into the fog and steal away to another rendezvous. Oh, good. Where's this one going to be? Back home on St. Anne's place. It's almost 10 o'clock and I'm sleepy. Husbands, they'll do that every time. <laughs> oh, Jerry, look. There's Charles and Ellen Prescott. It's getting late. Charles will be. Ellen Prescott! How long have you two been here? Charlie, my boy, I've been meaning to. Oh, Mark, I'm sorry. I thought it was Charles. Jerry, Pam, I, uh, would you join us? Oh, no, thanks. We, we were just on our way out. To, how is Charles? Quite well, thank you. Uh, give him our best, will you? It's been too long since we've seen you, both of you. Yes. Well, <laughs> good night. Good night. I love Pam and Jerry, but why did they have to pick this place to have dinner? I'm glad they saw us. Maybe they'll mention it to Charles, and that'll be just fine with me. Mark, please. When are you going to tell him that you want a divorce? I'm not sure, Mark. Sometimes I... Ellen, I'm not a high school kid. How much longer do you think I'm going to go along with this sort of a relationship? I know it hasn't been easy for you, Mark. If you'll... If you'll just be patient a little while longer. This isn't fair to any of us, Ellen. Sooner or later, Charles is going to hear some rather vicious gossip about us. Is that what you're waiting for? No doesn't deserve that. I'll tell him. When? Please, Mark, just give me a little more time. All right. How much more? A week. Ellen. Mark, please, a week. I promise you, you won't have to be patient much longer. Patient man, Charlie. Another round of drinks here, Dutch. So after ten years, your wife's in love with another guy. Yes. Is she younger than you? Almost twenty years younger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
you take it out of this? Sure. Put some more change in the jukebox, huh, Judge? Okay. I... wondering why I'm telling you all this. Oh, honey. You're in the kind of mood where you'd, you'd talk to anybody who'd hold still and listen. Relax. Say, you know what this setup of yours really needs? A first-class funeral. What? Sure. You say nobody knows that you're hip to what's going on between your wife and this guy. That's right. Well, if something should happen to him... What do you mean? You know what I mean. Listen, what it boils down to is that it's him or it's you. And kindly omit the flowers. No, I... I'm no murderer. Oh, I know that, honey. But, uh, I have a gentleman friend who is. You're not serious. No. You just slip me a thousand bucks and go out and get your dark suit pressed. It's that simple. Simple? Yeah, simple. He's gone, you're in the clear. What could be sweeter? No. Okay. I guess you can always go back to the bridge and jump off. Guys like you make me sick. Wait. Well? No, nothing. Look, mister, I'm not trying to sell you a thing. It's your problem. But uh, if you should change your mind, you know where to find me. Yes. All right, Mark. I'm going to tell him. I'll see you at your apartment tomorrow at nine. Good night, darling. Hello, Charles. Have you been at your office all this time? No, no. I left about nine o'clock. Went out for some fresh air and then stopped for a drink or two. S something wrong? Wrong? Well, I know, not with me. How was your movie? A bore. I'm... I'm rather tired. I think I'll go straight to bed if you don't mind. Why, of course not. I'll read for a while. Good night, dear. Charles. Yes? I'd like to go away. Away? Where? I don't know. Just away. Alone? Yes. This is rather sudden, isn't it? How long would you be gone? A week. I'd like to leave tomorrow evening. I see. All right, darling, I'll... I'll have the office make all the necessary arrangements, if you like. Thank you, Charles. You're awfully sweet to me. It's not hard, Ellen. Loving you as much as I do. Good night, dear. Good night, Charles. Ellen, has Mark Willard telephoned recently? Mark? No, why do you ask? He was supposed to be checking on that upstate property for me. I thought he might have phoned here. No, he hasn't. I'd better call him in the morning. In case he's going out of town. Good night, Charles. thousand dollars, is that right? Yeah. Got it? What's the setup? His name is Mark Willard. He lives alone in a bachelor apartment, 1201 Stacy Street. Apartment 5A, on the fifth floor. 1201 Stacy Street, 5A. Got it. He's meeting my wife there. Tomorrow evening, 9 o'clock. No, that's wrong. It's 
this evening at 9 o'clock. That's one lady I'll never keep, honey. My friend will be there before 9. Is there anything else you need to know? Good night, Charlie. Not good night. Goodbye. Oh, sure. It's been nice knowing you. in at this hour of the morning, but what time is it, Jerry? It's 8.15. Where's... Ellen, Ellen, darling, what is it? Is something the matter? I'm not sure. It's Charles. Mm -hmm. What about him? I've been up all night trying to find him. He came home shortly after I did last night. We talked a little. I went upstairs, and a few minutes later, I heard him leave the house. You haven't seen or heard from him since? No, I haven't. Something's happened to him. I know it. Oh, now, take it easy, Helen. If he'd had an accident, if he'd been sent to the hospital, you surely would have been notified by now. But you don't understand. If something's happened, it wasn't an accident. What do you mean? I think Charles knows I've been seeing Mark. Mark? Mark Willard? Yes. Oh, great. Oh, gosh, Jerry. Go on, Ellen. Mark wants me to divorce Charles and marry him. I wanted to get away for a week by myself, to think this thing through. Did you tell Charles about this? Just that I wanted to go away. He was agreeable, but right at the end, he dragged in a reference to, to Mark. Said something about calling him on a business deal, because Mark might be going out of town. He obviously suspects that you're going away with Mark. But I wasn't, and I never would. I know now I love Charles, and I'm never going to leave him. Only it may be too late. But why, darling? Because he... <laughs> Killed himself? Oh, Jerry. I'm sorry, but this is no time to be delicate. I mean, I'm willing to bet that Charles is too sound a guy to do anything like that. Then where could he be? <laughs> Did you notify the police? No. If Charles is all right, I don't want to make more of a mess of things than I already have. You try to get some rice, Dylan. I'm going out. Where are you going? To find Charles. Alive, I hope. Oh, Charles, where the devil have you been? Jerry, what's wrong? I've been looking all over town for you since 8 o'clock this morning, and it's almost 5.30. That'll be all, Harmon. Something the matter? Oh, no. No, everything's great. Look, you've been among the missing since midnight last night, and your wife is almost out of her mind worrying. Everything's fine. Sorry, I... should have told her I had to be in Trenton this morning. Uh -huh. Is that why you left last night? I was restless. I couldn't sleep. I... Thought I'd drive down. Oh, now, look, let's stop kidding. Kidding? About what? About Trenton, about Ellen, and... and about Mark Willard. Mark Willard? You know Ellen's been seeing him, don't you? No, I don't. All right, have it your way. But what you don't know is that Ellen is still in love with you. I don't understand. She's terrified for fear she's been foolish enough to drive you away from her. Jerry, I don't believe that. All right. Call her at my place and let her tell you so herself. Oh, and uh, just between the two of us, you can forget about Mark Willard. Obviously, he doesn't mean a thing to Ellen. Forget about... Look, Jerry, I I've got to make a call. I'll wait for you and drive you over to my place. Would you? Would you mind waiting outside? I'll be right with you. Okay. Mr. Willard, please. I'm sorry, Mr. Willard isn't in. Do you know where I can find him? This is Charles Prescott. 
sorry, Mr. Prescott. Mr. Willard isn't expected back, and he didn't leave word where he could be reached. But it's urgent. I must talk to him. Well, you might try him at home this evening after 9 o'clock. At home? After 9 o'clock. Thank you. Why don't you give up, Pam? You've called everyone in Greater Manhattan and nobody's seen them. Oh, I think there are a few people left. It's no use, Pam. Something's happened. I know it. I feel it. Charles is... I don't believe that, Ellen. And I'll tell you why I don't. It's the first thing that Jerry would have run down. Since we haven't heard from Jerry, there's every reason to believe that nothing very terrible has happened. Oh, you will see. Charles will be fine. Just fine. you tell me what this is all about? I asked you to wait in the car. Look, I'm waiting for an answer. All right, now, now, what's the matter? Where's my watch? I've got to know what time it is. It's 20 after 6. Now, calm down, Charlie. Jerry, let it go. I'm in trouble. That much I've already guessed. The point is, what kind of trouble? I, I met a woman in there last night. Her, her name was Lucille. I've got to find her. What's she done? Why, nothing yet. But, but you've got to stop her from doing something. That's right. Well, is that all you're going to tell me? That, that's all I can tell you. All right. Now, did you expect to find this Lucille in here this evening? I... I thought maybe Dutch, the owner, he, he could give me a lead. All right. Then we'll first we find Dutch, then we find Lucille. You, uh, speak English? Certainly. Oh, great. Uh, do you happen to know where Dutch lives? Sure. He and his old lady got a jerk over on Long Island somewhere. I don't know just where. Long Island? You know a girl named Lucille? She hang out in Dutch's joint? That's right. Where can I find her? Lots of dames hang out there. Dutch might know. I don't know. Jerry, we're wasting time. Hey, what do you guys want Dutch for? He owe you some money? No, I, I owe him some money. I promised I'd get it to him by tonight. Well, why didn't you say so before? By now, he could probably use a real bad. <laughs> you mean you know where we can find him? Sure. He's in the cellar at a brewery over on John Street. The big place, just off west. Brewery on John off west. Thanks a lot. Thanks for nothing. They won't let you in the joint without no okay. Well, how come? Who are you guys? Look here, you. Now, wait a minute. Uh, my calling card. Alexander Hamilton. Pleased to make your acquaintance, Mr. Hamilton. When you get to the brewery, kick on the big door three times. When a guy answers, tell him Patty says it's okay. Patty? Sure, that's me. Come on, fine. Oh. Come on, baby. Yeah. That cleans me. Good. Come over here a minute, will you? on your mind. Remember me? I was in your place last night. Oh, yeah. He was with Lucille. Yes. He was $50. Where can I find her? The corner of Harbor and King, second floor front, right at the head of the stairs. Thanks. For nothing. Half past seven. I've got to find her. She's got to stop him. Stop him? Now, wait a minute. You better let me in on this. Who does this woman have to stop from doing what? I can't tell you that. You can take off now if you want. No, I'm hooked. Here's her picture. This is her room, all right. Well, that's nice. Look, I hate to pry, but just how do you figure in this trap? I can see uh, why you wanted to stop him, whoever he is. 
Your boy's looking for something? Still didn't say she was expecting company. Never mind. Where'd she go? Out. I told her all the joints was closed today. How long ago did she leave? About half an hour ago. She ought to be back any minute. Come on, let's see if we can find her. Yeah, we can always come back here. Hey, wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? When I look around, yeah, you'd probably miss her. Let's just stay put a minute. Where is she? Spending that nice hunk of change that she got from you, no doubt. Maybe, maybe she just clipped me for it. Maybe she didn't make arrangements. Arrangements for what? Ten of eight. If I could only find him. She's the only lead I have. There she is. Hey, Lucille! sure of one thing, the police should be in on it. The police? I, I'd be ruined. Uh, I can stop him before he gets to Mark. It, it'll still be all right. You hired someone to kill Mark Willard. Yes, don't you see why I can... When? Where? Nine o'clock, Mark's apartment. No, you can't take the chance. I'm gonna call the police. Even if I live to be a hundred, I'll never understand women. Hmm? What's that, dear? I said I simply don't understand women. When Charlie Prescott was a sober, law-abiding citizen, his wife almost walked out on him, right? Yes, but... Right. Now that Charlie's in the hospital with a bullet in his shoulder and a cinch to be tried for conspiracy to commit murder, Alan's sticking even closer to him than his bandages. So? Well, what I want to know is what's the answer? You answered that question before you asked it. Hmm? It's easy. You simply don't understand women.
Mr. and Mrs. North is directed by Lou Landers. Produced by John W. Loveton. A John W. Loveton production. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. Featuring Francis DeSale. This has been a film presentation.